Is metal smithing your only job or is it a side job? Who is the target market for your product? How do you deal with low sales periods? How do you plan on expanding your business? How's your business going? I only wanted to ask how do you deal with low sales periods if you have them lots of love lots of love to you too so obviously I have them of course and to be honest even if you were a business that's doing very well throughout the year you will have low periods because usually that time after Christmas that's a dead period everywhere I've noticed it's on YouTube it's with my jewelry business Business, after this whole sprint and rush, Black Friday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, there's so much happening and always in January, February, even March, it's just very, very quiet. So it's several months during which you can use that time to reflect on your business, work on like admin, work on organization. I actually like that period because I can really focus on the backlog of things that I are piling up throughout the year and now I finally have time for them. But then when the low period happens when I didn't expect it to happen or then there's just a very quiet month, I try to take that time to see why that happens. Why is that? Is my target audience that I thought was my target audience? Maybe it's not. Maybe I should make some changes here. Maybe I could try advertising. Maybe it's just changes in the algorithm because I do rely a lot on social media for my jewelry to be seen. So maybe people are just not seeing my jewelry and therefore not buying. And also it could be a time to start learning about Google Merchant, Google Ads, analytics, things like that, because you shouldn't rely only on social media, not just because of algorithm, but yeah, <laughs> mostly, but also because it is saturated. That's one thing. Another one, it's a constant work. It's very exhausting and doesn't always convert for everybody. And three, it could go away any day. So it's good to have other um, areas in your business where you are covered have a newsletter. It doesn't mean that the moment you have a newsletter it's gonna bring tons of customers to your business, although that happens in some cases, but you will still have contact with your customer if social media for some reason doesn't work. And then try learning more about all of those things. I've recently set up my Google Merchant account and I'm just learning about these things, which is tiring and it's annoying. <laughs> Not everyone enjoys it. I don't enjoy it. It's necessary. If you don't want it to be just your hobby and you want to keep selling, you will have to think about your business as a business and that includes marketing, that includes advertising and all of these things that when you have a low period, use it to learn and educate yourself, get skills so you don't feel guilty that it's just time wasted. It's not, you just spend this time on improving yourself and your business. Let's keep going. Miriam, um, hi, I have one. Is metal smithing your only job or is it a side job, hobby? I would really like to know if one can be financially independent from silversmithing. Currently, silversmithing and this whole jewelry business is not my only job. I actually, from the beginning, it wasn't just my only job. I started my YouTube channel and being a content creator almost immediately when I started making jewelry. So these two things were happening simultaneously and it would be unfair for me to say that I only do jewelry because I don't. I also am a content creator. So it's hard for me to answer your question if being just a jeweler is enough because I don't have experience with this. And I can see, obviously I can see other makers who are only jewelers. So obviously it is possible. <laughs> 
it really depends on how you treat it and if you treat it as a business what are the steps you are taking what's your plan because you do need a plan you could try and wing it but that's not very safe for you especially if you are looking into it being a sustainable thing for you and your income <laughs> so having a plan and knowing exactly what you need to do and knowing what help you will need to get that's very important so that's my answer <laughs> i hope it answers your question if you could pick one and <laughs> if you could only pick one what's your favorite most favorite oof, piece you've ever made love your work basha thank you so much i have no idea Oh, if I were to pick just one, that would have to be The Great Wave, this one, by Hokusai, because I love this artwork, <laughs> I love it, and I also am very proud of this jewelry piece. But other than that, there's also butterfly rings, which I just really love this design, and I really love the like a multi-stone pieces this design and also koi fish oh no i just love so many <laughs> i really do but my most favorite and cherished one would be the great wave i've got some nice fire rapid question rapid fire questions from jeff who is the target market for your product mostly women 25 45 but i do not discriminate anyone can wear my jewelry obviously but for like business purposes if i were to summarize my clientele it's mostly people 25 26 up to 45 50. mostly they are around 30s when they are comfortable financially they graduated they started family or they are single and for various reasons they are ready to invest in more expensive but more sustainable jewelry made with um, semi-precious gemstones uh, precious metals and things like that how do you plan on expanding your business by scaling my business, looking into hiring help with marketing, with editing, with social media and learning myself. So I still I'm learning and I'm looking into starting more courses and just educating myself, getting better. And hopefully all of this will be generating more income that I can then reinvest it, like reinvest or like invest in my my business so just following very typical path learning more about advertising and using it for my business will be something I want to do what inspires your work I'd assume it's large in nature but what parts specifically leaves trees plants different flowers I really like petals and leaves in particular, those shapes, they are very flowy, they're very beautiful and I think cre recreated in metal they can be very interesting. That's why my sakura flower is one of my favorites to make because I just really like perfecting and experimenting with those petals just adding shape to it and um, what else very interesting creatures um, animals creatures creatures uh, like mantas for example i just find them fascinating the way they look and the way they move and i just really love them and koi fish so my koi fish obviously is not the fish that you would find in the wild <laughs> But the way I transformed this shape, you could say that probably that my koi fish is a combo of a goldfish and a koi carp <laughs> molded together. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, the, this chimera. Yeah, so it's just almost like it comes from a fantasy world. So that's why I love it. <laughs> and what hobbies do you have? Apart from jewelry making and editing, making videos, <laughs> I love movies. I am just, I love movies and TV shows, series. I love watching it and then I love talking about it, discussing it. I just really, really enjoy movies. <laughs> and I love board games 
and I love hiking. I really enjoy hiking, although I didn't have many opportunities in the past years, but this year, this summer, I am definitely going to do it much more often. And it's probably going to appear on my channel as well in my videos because I want to combine it <laughs> with what I do. But yeah, I would say those are like three main hobbies that I have. Apart from that, I just like decluttering. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it is my hobby. Documents, I love decluttering documents. Absolutely love it. So if you have some, I could, you know, <laughs> come and declutter them. <laughs> No, but I just really love sorting through things and just decluttering and organizing. And then when there's ones that are too, like on the pile, trash pile, I love just ripping them. And it's just very meditative meditative tip and relaxing. I recommend it a lot. <laughs> How's your business going? It's going great. <laughs> it could be better, but I know what I need to do to make it better and I am in the process of just implementing some changes. Definitely better organization, time management, <laughs> getting help when you can, getting help is amazing <laughs> and just not overworking myself so trying to focus on less but do it better so these are i would say the main things that i'm doing now and if we want to get into nitty-gritty advertising i really want to explore a little bit and see how that works how would this work for my jewelry business and having help with social media, experimenting with newsletter. These are the things, specific ones that I am doing and with jewelry making, trying not to pressure myself too much and make what I really love to make. The mistake that I uh, made, a very important one, I wanna share that with you, is that whenever I made something in the past, and it did well, guess what I did or didn't do? <laughs> yes, I didn't continue with that. So when I look at other jewelers, I can see, especially when they have a specific style and a design, you can see on their feed, for example, on Instagram, what they are doing, <laughs> essentially, that they made something, it performed very well, and they kind of do more of it, which is a very logical step to take, right? Well, not for this little brain because I, when I look back on my work, whenever I did something that performed well and was great and popular, let's say I made a collection and some pieces were just in many baskets, but I only had one or two of those, I didn't make more later. Why not? I did, but like a year later. Though I had already lost those customers, it's very unlikely that they would wait a whole year for me to make that thing that they wanted. <laughs> So what I could really recommend is really paying attention to what's popular within your own shop, your customers, and making more of this, but not keeping your customers wait. So right now I want to be more sensitive and try and really focus on how the flow is within my own business. <laughs> I hope that helps you. Do you feel like metal smithing was definitely your calling? Like when did it really feel like this is actually something you want to do and feel real? It was definitely after I already graduated from history of art and I moved to United Kingdom, Scotland first and I started my small business which was jewelry business but it was beading and it was like beaded bracelets, beaded necklaces and I was working with gemstones. That's when I discovered the world of silversmiths and metalsmiths. And actually, I think it was in particular Instagram, I think, because I joined Etsy, I started selling on Etsy. So naturally I needed social media. And I think that's how I found out about this and 
And it's not that I didn't know that it existed before, but I had this mindset coming from Poland that to be a professional jeweler and work with gold and silver, to be a goldsmith, you have to study it, you have to be an apprentice and you have to go this official path and that only then you can do it. I had no idea that you could just do it by yourself. Like in Poland it wasn't back then, because now it gets better, but back then it wasn't really a thing. I didn't know about this. <laughs> so when I moved to UK I discovered people on social media like Karin from Soliloquy Jewelry and I saw this self-thought next to her name and I was like wow okay okay <laughs> i was very excited so that's when i decided to go for it i just knew that this was something i wanted to do and also obviously there was this next step of finding out if i can actually do it me with my skills and so i started learning and practicing and luckily it all went well but mostly because i didn't give up and I really kept at it and I was very serious about it from the beginning. So I wasn't really treating it just as a hobby, although I did keep in mind that it may be just a hobby if it doesn't work, but I was fine with it. So metalsmithing for me was this thing that you do in life that you can see yourself working towards. Because I will just give you an example. For example, I really love to sing. I can sing and I did sing a lot in my life and I could see myself as a singer, a performer, but I, I could not see my Myself working towards it. It was always something I was dreading. I hate castings. I hate auditions. I just, no, <laughs> this is just not for me. So just because I could see myself performing, it was not enough. But with metal smithing, I could see myself spending hours upon hours working, practicing, not seeing results, because it wasn't the end goal that was justifying all of this for me. It was actually doing the thing. So yeah, I think finding that thing is important. Do you make jewelry for yourself and what is your favorite piece of jewelry? Oh, it's really hard to answer. I don't think I ever made something specifically for myself, that I, I knew that I am making it for myself, but I did keep some pieces that I made with other collections and just decided that I want it. <laughs> that I want to keep it. Those pieces are actually on my hand right now because I put them on to show you. So it's those rings. This ring uh, with Aurora Opal, this rose quartz ring with Sakura flowers, which I'm actually going to be making a whole batch of those rings very soon. I'm just waiting for the stones to arrive. It just takes forever. And then there's this little Sakura flower that I made and this little midi ring that I made just as a prototype but I will be making more for my website just to pair with other rings have this like a ring stack and I also kept this ring which was actually purchased by a customer but sadly a very sad thing happened in the shipping someone must have stomped on the package and slightly crushed the ring band which was devastating for me and the customer sent it back and we decided that she's just gonna get a refund from me and i fixed the ring because i was able to do it and i kept it and i really love it <laughs> i also really love this pendant that I made for the video actually there was like a video challenge on my channel and I made this little cage and I just love it I wear it often but as like a b-roll I'll show you now the pieces that I really love that aren't made by me I purchased them from other shops or makers and I love those earrings they are one of my favorites they are ceramic and I really love this choker which is brass and it just looks so nice it's one of my favorite pieces as well oh oh and I love this necklace I got it from Lisa bring me my battle axe I hope you know her if 
you don't, you should check her out. She makes beautiful jewelry. But yeah, she made those uh, necklaces and I got one. What was your reaction to using a flex shaft and a Dremel and stuff the first time? I'm finding myself to be pretty on edge every time I need to use some kind of rotating device. The ones that cut and remove metal are like my biggest fear. And I kind of need someone to tell me it gets better with practice. It absolutely gets better with practice. I myself, I was so scared and I'm actually still am <laughs> with rotating devices and the cutting tools, speed tools. I am just always quite intimidated when I use them. Even today, I still don't feel entirely comfortable using them. Drilling, it's not my favorite job. Or I have a jam ring cutter maker and <laughs> I don't really enjoy using it while it really speeds up the process and I, I mean I love it. I love the fact that I can just make a coil and cut all of those jump rings all at once. Just the fact of using this little saw and <laughs> I don't really like it. <laughs> I love it for what it does, but I don't like using it because I'm just easily intimidated when it comes to speed tools and things like that. So it's completely normal for you to be intimidated. Don't worry, it does get better. Just stay safe, use protective equipment. Also, have you ever worked with silver clay? I never knew it existed until a few days ago. So neat. It is, isn't it? I know about silver clay. I never worked with it yet but they really want to because I think it's so much fun there's one artist I don't remember her name but she works with silver clay and the things she makes like all of the leaves like she she sculpts in this clay and then oh it's just amazing it's really beautiful so it's a very fun medium and you should try it <laughs> I know I have to try it. <laughs> How did you get really good at photographing your pieces? Thank you. <laughs> that is my biggest struggle now. Any references to any info? Thanks Basha, I really enjoy your content. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to hear that. I have a couple of videos on my channel. I will link them under the video about photographing my jewelry. I have changed some things, so I am going to make another video in the near future about how I photograph my jewelry. But but honestly, there isn't like a groundbreaking tip I could give you. Well, there's one, but let me just save it for a second. There isn't like a very specific one because I still struggle with photography. <laughs> and I was photographing my manta pendants the other day and I, it was so frustrating. The light was horrible. I just couldn't capture the way they looked. The colors looked awful. Somehow I was just unable to photograph them. And I thought I did have a lot of light. Like it wasn't very difficult with conditions, but I still wasn't able to do it. So don't worry if you struggle with it because you will always struggle with it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean that there's always something that may, can make photography difficult. Uh, the light, the conditions, but there are certain things that you can do to make it better. So check out my videos. And right now I can just give you one tip that I don't know if this will make you happy to hear it, but it is the tip that helped me tremendously. I invested in a good camera. <laughs> Canon Rebel T6S. It's a very good camera and I use 50 millimeters lens, which is 1.8 and it's amazing. There's just so much light in that lens and it allows for a very beautiful detailed image while giving you this beautiful bokeh effect when uh, the background is blurred. It just looks amazing. I would say that my photography looks the way it does because of this camera that we got both with Jarek together in 2016, I think. So it's been so many years, seven years that we've been using it and it's still brilliant. And it was one of the best investments I could make in my jewelry business because photography is the way you show your stuff to people. There is no other way for you to do it unless you sell in person. And if you don't, 
Just telling people you have nice stuff is not enough. You have to show it to them. And sometimes when you take photos with your phone or like a cheap camera, your jewelry just doesn't look the same in the photos as it does in person. So you are shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> You're hurting yourself. So I would say if you were to invest some money somewhere, getting a camera and good lens, because that 50 millimeters is just amazing, would be my best advice for you. I hope this helps you. For more tips, like specific photography tips, check out my videos and also stay tuned because I will make another one very soon. <laughs> okay, I think that's everything for today. That's all of the questions. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. I'll try to answer like in the comments where your question was asked um, because I don't want to leave you hanging. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>